Hello, I'm Nikki Raby and welcome to my podcast. As you can see from my bio, I am a lover of the portfolio career. I'm an actor, a coach, writer, speaker and podcaster. I'm based in London and I'm a partner to one and a mum to two. Right, I'm on a mission to help you to create a business or a brand on your terms. So even if you're just starting out and you have no idea where to begin or you know you want to go to that next level and you're feeling all the feels, you're in the right place. I believe we should be able to create success that feels good, that suits your personality, your goals, your circumstances and makes you money. In this podcast, I want to share stories, conversations with people who have created their own gig, how they started, what they've learned, how they actually make money, and make sure they're always full of actionable tips. And you'll also find some mini episodes with me. I've coached over a thousand people in my coaching practice now with a focus on personal branding. So you can expect lots of chat and strategy around goal setting, getting visible, making money, creating opportunity, saying yes, saying no, the mindset, all the things. Because I know that it can be tough. Building your own version of career and life can be the biggest self-development journey. Oh, and uh, I promise I won't say the J word too often. Everything we discuss will be in the show notes and on my website, nikkiraby.com. And also, if we're not pals on social media, come and find me at Nikki Raby. A bonus, you don't have to ugly cry alone anymore. You're in great company. Also, if you love this kind of chat, please let me know what you want more of. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all the good things, because you know what? It's time to make stuff happen. In today's episode, I am talking to Cleo Wood, who is the founder of And Breathe, Cleo is a postnatal and parental well-being expert and she created and breathed after her daughter Delphi was born in 2014 and she found that the fitness and well-being retreats suitable for new parents just didn't exist so she created one. Cleo draws together a team of expert nutritionalists, psychotherapists, personal trainers, mindful experts, doctors and physiotherapists to create an all-round support for mums and dads. And she's a passionate woman's health advocate and has written for The Telegraph, The Paper and more, as well as appearing on podcasts such as Motherkind, Motherhood and Breaking Mum and Dad. I am thrilled to have Cleo with us today. Again, I recorded this when I was very pregnant in the heat of the summer. So it felt really appropriate to talk about this next phase. So if there is a new parent out there, feel free to pass this on, share the love and I hope Hope you enjoy the episode. Cleo, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Hot, sweaty and pregnant. What an image for you all. How nice. <laughs> what, um, what but this is not, well, this your brand just seems very um, fitting at the moment because I am thinking about that fourth trimester. Tell me more about what you do and, and share with us all what your business is. Uh, thank you, I, w- I will. And I see now why you wanted to have a chat, so it's, yeah, it's good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it sounds very like I'm it's very self serving then, but I promise it's for the good of the audience. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I'm I'm really pleased to, to chat about it and, it, and it's lovely that the word is getting out there a bit more. Um, basically, I run and breathe, and we are a specialist uh, family well-being company, and we focus on fitness retreats for families, postnatal, and the menopause. Um, so it's all around kind of keeping fit and getting fit and getting strong. Um, food, so good nutrition but realistic nutrition as well and feeling good so kind of mindfulness time for you self-care childcare, all of that is kind of baked into to a really awesome package um and we do those in france the uk morocco and we've been to the states as well so um certainly feels like we're, we're international these days but um it's been an amazing journey over the past four years fantastic and did it start when you're 
daughter was born how, what were you doing before um because you know with the with the sort of the postnatal thing was that something sparked from becoming a mum yourself a hundred percent um <laughs> I what you were tired really what (laughs) what didn't know what to expect really Uh, yeah (laughs) it was god it's a complete nightmare isn't it I mean yeah I'm very lucky to have had a beautiful healthy daughter um and you know have her be alive and not have any issues with um you know having her um but it was a hell of a bombshell really in life when you become a parent you no one really prepares you for what that means um and what difference that makes to your life and your self-esteem and your knowledge of what you're doing your security in yourself um, your identity. And so I really, really struggled with that. I, I actually had, uh, didn't have a great pregnancy and I had quite a traumatic birth as well. Um, and then postnatal depression and struggling to breastfeed and all of that. Um, and I also had some pelvic floor issues. Um, so all of that coupled with the kind of new parenthood thing, I was desperate to go on a retreat to yes. rehabilitate and recover and spend some time as a family. Um, but there just wasn't one. And believe me, I looked because I'm quite into fitness and, yes. and was previously as well. Um, so I knew all the places to look, um, but none of the retreats were A, appropriate for kind of recovery and rehab- rehabilitation anyway. And also none of them you could bring your baby to. So uh, I obviously wasn't ready to leave Delphi at that stage anyway um, and wouldn't have wanted to. Um, So I kind of had this brainwave. Well, um, we've got a wonderful, beautiful property in France and we're very lucky to have that. And I just thought oh, I know, why don't we try and do a postnatal retreat? Um, yes. So we did one with family and friends, and it kind of went from there, really. Um, so, kind of, you know, they do say out, out of a need is, is born a good idea. So it really feels like that's what happened with, with Anne Breathe. Yeah, and, and it's so, oh, gosh, I'm going to use the word already. I can't believe it, but it's so authentic to you <laughs> because it's, I can't believe it. How long have we been going and I've used it already? Um, but it's. Yeah, you're right. It, and when you connect to it as the business owner, other people will feel that passion, I guess. And I, I was saying to Matty, my partner earlier, is that sometimes I'll get messages on LinkedIn or people will say, like, I've got a business opportunity that's going to be great for working around your family. And sometimes these people are not parents for whatever mm. reason. But on paper the being a parent is very different to actually the reality of keeping all the balls in the air which of course many of which end up on the floor at any given time yeah I think you're so right it's it's really interesting actually as a as a slight diversion I went to a kids party with my daughter um a couple of weeks ago and the children's entertainers there were clearly not parents And the way that they structured the entertainment meant that they hadn't left a food break in for the kids. And it sounds like such a silly thing. But but never mind the kids. What about the parents? Like, I'm always (laughs) like, when are we eating? What are we doing? I mean, literally, these kids were, like, kind of tearing at the food on the table because they hadn't, like, taken a break to, like, have the tea. Um, And, you know, it was just one of those things that they just didn't quite realise that maybe that was something they, they, they should have baked in and... Um, and it just kind of, it just, it just made it really obvious to, to yes. me that they, they didn't have their own kids and they kind of weren't really aware of the impact that that would, that that would have on them. Um, but yeah, it, it is, it's, it's lovely to be able to speak from a place of experience, I think on these, on our retreats, because people come and they kind of, we're still pretty niche. We're still the only ones who are doing exactly what we're doing and, I think people don't quite know what to expect when they come. Well, um, when I guess there's come... a certain vulnerability to it as well of like, I'm, I'm really need help for this particular thing, or I'm looking for support. Because again, when you go to all these parent craft classes or whatever that might be, they're like, well, we'll give you the handbook and then off you go. And you're supposed to be great at this. It's like having a personal <laughs> trainer or anything like that, where you're just like, oh gosh, um, it feels quite exposing to say, gosh, 
building myself back up or having time to heal or breathe or all of those sort of fundamental things it, it feels uh quite exposing yeah yeah I, th I think you're right and 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 it, because it's not a normal in inverted commas thing to do it's you know it's, it's even more you you make yourself even more vulnerable I guess because you you know you don't really know anyone anyone else who's been to one you don't really know what to expect but I, I think that's where the personal touch comes in like our team is so experienced now whether I'm there or whether another host is there whether Caroline who's our head PT is there or another PT um you know we're also experienced in kind of holding that space and yes. making people feel safe and secure and our biggest thing is no judgment because mm. you have so much of that outside um outside the retreat and and kind of in real life that it's really lovely and refreshing not to be not to have to submit to that when you're Absolutely. when you're with us and it always that judgment comes on when you're having the worst day or you haven't got it all figured out or you just cried on your living room floor. Like, you know, that's when people go, oh, when are you going to start? Doing? And you're like, oh, gosh, I've never been Leave to me alone. <laughs> be able to nail brilliant. Oh, and you're coming round and you want dinner. Wonderful. Excellent. Um, how did you know how to structure the programme of having that fine balance of being able to hold the space for people? but also acknowledge the fact, I guess, that these people are sort of strangers and, you know, have so many different variables or family setups or requirements yeah. or expectations that they want to gain from the retreat. How did you begin with that process of actually setting this up <laughs> as a, this is what we do? Yeah, it, uh, it's a really tricky one, actually, because, I mean, obviously, a lot of it was from our own experience, mine and my husband's, and, and what we felt would work. Um, we played around a lot with it on the fa friends and family retreat that we had, which is the first thing that we did, um, almost like a test bed for, for all of our ideas and how it would work. Um, and we've just gradually refined it and refined it since then you know our first retreats were amazing and we have brilliant feedback but I know that we've got even better since then um and that's really gratifying I think to to know that we're learning as we go along and we can um you know take into account the experiences that we've had and the experiences of our guests and the different locations and you know the different weather you know there's always something that's going to impact it and you go oh okay well if that happens next time then that's what we'll do yes um, and I think it's great because it, you know it's obviously a really personal journey for me but it means that I can make those decisions if I want to and the team has come along with me and they're you know when the, the best members of our team are the ones who can adapt and who are really actually quite excited by changing things and, and making it new and making sure that they're doing their best. I think that's that's what's important, really, I guess. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And how, I guess, how did you know where in the initial stages that like you had the property, but how did you know where to spend your money or how to get everything get, sort of pull the I guess pull the project together of I think um th there's a cafe that opened near us quite recently and it's got like the fanciest tables the artwork you can just tell is really expensive they've got oodles of staff and I'm just looking at it like hoping for the best but thinking I feel like this is going to be closed in like three months because oh. everything is just so I don't know, like, let's just throw money at it before you yeah. sort of know what it is. And I, I felt that certainly when I was rebranding as a, a coach and adding the strings to my bow, that there's always something you can spend money on. So I, I yeah. guess, how did you navigate that in the beginning? <laughs> By not having any money. By no. not having any money. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true because you're often bootstrapping. Aren't? I mean, you know, there's oh, very okay. few people who go, gosh, I've got 100 grand under my yeah. bed. I just don't know what to do with it. Yeah, gosh, just burning a hole in my yeah, pocket. Exactly. Um, no, we, we've we self-funded so far. And, you know, so we, we have put over the past four years, we have, we have put a fair amount of money in, but, you know, nowhere near hundreds of thousands or anything like that. Um, and so each purchase is really considered and obviously at the beginning it was you know far less polished 
um, which I think in itself ha had its own charm. I don't think that took away from the experience at all, but it was far less polished than it is now. Um, and so as we have grown and, you know, our revenues increased and, and we've kind of found the right level of pricing for, for the service that we provide, um, we've been able to invest a little bit more here and there. But it's always... You know, I'm, I've always still got one eye on, oh, that really needs to be quite good value for money. Are we actually getting what we need yes. out of that? Um, and I do sometimes wish that weren't the case because it is tiring. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, I guess it's a good habit to get into. And, and especially at the beginning, you know, I definitely, you know, we've, yeah, we've, we're still bootstrapping really. Um, and I think we're, we're on the cusp now of, of, kind of ramping up a little bit and, and kind of moving to a different level of the business. But yeah, it's been a really, it, you know, I'll be honest, it's been a really hard slog at times. Oh, of course. And anybody who says that it isn't is a big old liar because <laughs> I think, you know, whether it, whether it is something and, you know, often it is something that you love, you've still got to put the hours in, you've still got to have awkward conversations or if it's your own gig you've still got to um do elements of things that push you out of your comfort zone or you go mm. oh my goodness I never knew how to do this but yet I'm on the phone to this insurance company or you know asking yeah. for something and I don't know if it is actually what I want but this man called Tony says it is and <laughs> I hope Tony's right and we just don't know so um, and what I really struggle with actually is using my time to do things that I know that other people can't. So I, you know, I do have an assistant, I do have like a marketing assistant and, um, as well. And it's struggling to hand over the things that I know that they can do and the, in the hours that I know that they'll be working rather yes. than doing it myself and wasting my time doing things that actually, you know, it would be far better for me to be, you know, nurturing partnerships or, you know, business development or, you know, doing a whole load of other stuff that I know that they can't do. But it's it's really easy to get sucked back into that because it's in front of you and you know how to do it. And actually, it's easier for you to do it sometimes than explain yes. to someone else how to do it. <laughs> and it's sometimes those tasks don't take up a lot of brain power. And if you've been like nailing and smashing through 140 things that feel really tough, sometimes yeah. kind of faffing around with an email just feels lovely and but you yeah. have to, you're right you have to remember that moment of going oh actually this is not what I need to be doing and yeah. I need to be bold and kind of do that how um how have you got your your business out there what's been really useful in terms of bringing people's attention to your brand and people really understanding what you do I guess so many people I they start with that need for a business and they start with the idea and it looks beautiful on paper but then there's that tipping point of oh blimey I've actually got to tell people about this um what's been yeah. useful for you and worked so far so we were very lucky and worked very hard to get a lot of amazing press um so because it's a really new type of concept um it's actually you know again it's all about trying to raise brand awareness but explain the concept to people mm. um when we started no one was searching for postnatal retreat at all i know now that you know about uh you know uh, you know kind of 20 percent more people are which is great um and if you do search postnatal retreat, we're like the first three pages, oh, um, right. which is amazing. Um, and we also come up a lot in searches for like best family holidays um, and, you know, best best holiday with toddler. Um, that includes the that. toddler. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, oh I had this amazing holiday as a parent oh but the child wasn't actually there yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> um and that is all because of you know it's obviously because of our web presence and, and the partnerships that we've had but it's mainly because of press and and you know linking um from those you know pretty important um papers and magazines back to us as well um and you know it allows us to build a bit of credibility with an audience as well because yes. they are like oh this is a kind of funny little new 
thingy oh oh but they've been in the times so you know they must be real yes. and they've been in the guardian oh and i really like the guardian so that you know that must be something that i would like then as well and oh look they're in harper's bazaar oh, that's fancy like so it's um you know so so i think that that really helps just in terms of building up brand credibility and and, and recognition and so on um we've always been fairly good at uh facebook ads as well although that's kind of been a bit up and down over the years so it's just about kind of trying to find the right formula for any particular <laughs> moment in time yes. um but those those are the two main things i mean we do a lot of partnership stuff you know blog swaps with people and you know competitions with influencers and that kind of thing like smaller bits and pieces um and we do have a social media presence which is you know it's not stunning but it's it's kind of there and it, every little helps i think um so it's kind of a combination of those things but i think what really like launched us and, and made people aware of us was definitely the press aspect so that was you know a brilliant uh, investment right at the beginning fantastic and i love the fact that you were exposed to those big markets probably before you felt ready or whilst you were still maybe tweaking the concept or in the kind of early months or early years of the business and I think sometimes people think press is like 10 years down the line whereas actually mm -hmm. you can get going from where you are right now and if people like you and they like the concept they're going to buy into that and then that sort of gets the momentum going um yeah. how have you found yourself building a team and bringing people on board as you've grown that are going to share your vision but also bring their unique flavor and their excellence and brilliance to the table it's that's a really interesting question because it's been really hard to pin down exactly what's important about the team members i mean obviously it's it's a bit different with you know admin or or my you know my assistant for example they're that's a bit easier in a way to find the right person for and train up. Yes. Um, but for the delivery teams, like the people who actually go on the retreats and, and the practitioners, it's, it's another question. Like the personality thing is really, really important. And also I've learned that they really need to buy into the and breathe concept as well. They yes. need to see it as a we rather than a they. Yes. Um, and we had an interesting not great experience last year where that didn't happen and they you, you know <laughs> the, the hosts and, and and the practitioners who were there it was very much old oh, and breathe were they not and breathe is us and right. that really made a difference to the way that the guests perceived the whole experience um and it wasn't it wasn't great it, it, it wasn't our best um one and and it wasn't one of our core retreats which I think made made a difference as well and I think that was a really big lesson to me to stick to what what we're passionate about yes rather than trying to shoehorn a different concept into the um under the unbreathe umbrella if you mm, see what I mean. for sure for sure because I think sometimes you can diversify way too much not you but one can and sort of mm. um try and be all things to all people especially if you're in a serving caring type situation yeah. I, I know I felt like that with my coaching in the beginning like are you are you sad don't worry I can help <laughs> you do you want a new job in retirement I can help you with that and it's like <laughs> what do I know about retirement nothing like we're never going to retire because of the way that it is so yeah. I think when you get back into that sort of refining it and streamlining it oh my goodness it's so much easier because you expend so much energy trying to do all the things and yeah. I'm sure people would look at me and go what are you doing like you know nothing about <laughs> this what's it all about and how is it sort of managing living in the UK but managing something abroad as well yeah tricky um it's it's much easier now than it was at the beginning um because there it's it's a dual thing, you know, the property is kind of one part of what I do um, and is actually like a separate business to and breathe, which is I see kind of as, as my main business. Um, the property is just a kind of in the background thing. Yeah, um, just still, doing all kind of sexy and grand. Yeah, sure, sure. Just a little project on the side, <laughs> bedroom house. Um, 
Uh, but it's, you know, obviously requires a lot of headspace when things come up, like, you know, uh, we've had some really bad storms over the past couple of years. So, you know, there's been roof damage. So it's like, you know, all hands on deck when you get the call through from the housekeepers to say, um, there's holes in the roof, (laughs) (laughs) you know, um, so that, that can be really hard. I've got an amazing uh, and amazingly trustworthy team over there now and team of contacts that um, we've started to work with. Um, it took us a long time to find the right team, but it makes such a difference and I couldn't do it without them, that's for sure. Um, and, you know, that was a question of waiting to find the right person. We got burnt a couple of times, you know, re- using the wrong people. Um, and again, that that was just a bit of a lesson to me, I suppose. Um, we, you know, you don't know what you don't know in, in a way. So true. Um, so, yeah, so it's been it's been interesting. Um, the, the retreats themselves, you know, we don't we do. Uh, probably half of them in France at the moment but you know next year we're actually going to be doing a lot in in different properties in partnership with with other people as well um so it will it, there won't be so many um based in France itself um so it will be much a bit more separate than it has been which I think will be really interesting I think and, and good for my own headspace to to just treat them separately because I think that really helps yeah for sure and what do you do because you're holding space for everybody, whether that's when you're hosting a retreat or managing staff, or I was going to say managing your husband, like collaborating <laughs> equally with your husband or being a mum. What are the things that top you up? And even if you're like, I'm so tired, my child's been awake up all night or the roof's just fallen in, you know, those days where yeah. things just pile up. What helps you to take a step back um, and recalibrate and just go it's okay I've got this I can do this this is the next day that's that's such an interesting question because it assumes that I do have the time to do that right exactly (laughs) I just go to a spa yeah yeah yeah, exactly I I am a massive massive advocate for self-care that is what and breathe is all about but I'm very very bad at taking my own advice um I I'm better sometimes than I am at others but there's no denying that my stress levels are pretty high it's something that I'm working on and working on pretty like solidly at the moment because it's it's kind of got to the point where you know something's got to give and I really don't want that thing to be my own health and (laughs) mental health um so I'm taking it a lot more seriously now than I was um I think I personally really struggle with societal expectations and cultural frameworks that means I think I need to succeed in all areas as I think a lot of women do Um, and but it's but it's kind of trying to uh, take a step outside of myself and think okay well look if you were my friend what would I be telling you Um, I really struggle um, with uh, my levels of, of self-compassion I, I don't have very much of it and uh, so that's also something that I'm working on um, so I think you know I I always try and meditate every day whether that's for like one minute or ten minutes um, every little helps and I if I, I I try and do it throughout the day as well like I might do a couple of minutes at lunchtime and then a couple of minutes just before I go and pick my daughter up as well as doing it when I get into bed because I find that if I can bring that chaos down in my head during the day it's easier than to do at night yes Um, and I do struggle at night to sleep quite a lot of the time I'm, I'm a bit better than I was but um it's it's definitely been pretty bad over the last couple of years just because I've been juggling too many things I think which is you know another lesson in itself and it does Um, feel at night sometimes if there's ever a a problem or something that's bubbling in your head it's like somebody's shining a great big torch in your eyes like (laughs) I'm just gonna highlight all these problems and they just seem to escalate and seem so huge and meaty in the middle of the night and oh my goodness um somebody said to me the other day sometimes the best thing you can do for your business is go to bed I was like oh that's so true because 
you know, when I start opening my laptop at 10 o'clock going, right, I'm going to tackle this. I'm like, what am I doing? This is not how I work best. But I love yeah. that sort of getting to know yourself and doing it in a way that really suits you and, and listening to your own intuition is so yeah. important. I definitely think that, you know, the working style is is really key for me as well. Like I don't do well trying to mix, you know, parenting and working. So me neither. Yeah. Yeah. Even if I do fewer hours work during the day and then take time off when I go and pick my daughter up, I think that's better for me than trying to do, you know, smash out a few emails while she's watching Paw Patrol or something. Um and the other thing, I guess my one one thing that I do do is um my phone goes down at seven o'clock every day. And oh. I can't, I can't look at social media in the evenings. I, you know, I refuse to. <laughs> um, and if I, because if I do, it, it just, it, my brain just doesn't, it lights back up again. Um, even at, even at kind of seven, eight o'clock. Um, and that's, you know, it's a good couple of hours before I go to bed. So that's, that's a, a really important thing for me is, is just to kind of switch off fully as soon as pops goes down, my daughter, um, you know, I put my phone down shortly afterwards and that's it because I, I just can't, my brain just doesn't, doesn't listen to me otherwise. It's just like, <laughs> yes. <"Hala." laughs> I do I'm have to working. treat it like a kind of obnoxious toddler. Like, no, yeah. I've said enough. That's it. No more. <laughs> like, mommy is not happy with you, right? Because you have to sort of go there to that point of taking it seriously because, um yes my partner sometimes does that like are you getting to get off your phone or whatever and certainly with this pregnancy that's yeah. you know between tw I'll sleep until a bit about midnight and then sometimes between 12 and 3 I'm like la 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 and I've got myself into a weird circle where yeah. I'll end up listening to podcasts because I can't sleep but then I can't sleep because I'm thinking about the podcast and then yeah. I just feel like I yeah go slightly mad by the end of it but um <laughs> you know such is life hey um what are you excited about in terms of what have you got coming up what do you want people to to know about and find out more about um so actually we have um just launched a couple of new things which are more kind of at home products than uh residential retreats um it's been really interesting because obviously the retreats are a fairly high value product yes um, but they need to be, there is a lot of work that goes into them. It's a lot of staff, you know, we can only host so many families before it becomes chaotic because the kids are involved, you know, it's not an adults only retreat. Yes. So it becomes a whole different ball game. Um, and so they're inherently quite a high end product, but I really wanted to try and reach out to those people who are, you know, not able to spend that money, um, but really want to feel the kind of nurturing and nourishing and, and you know, strength giving and, and create and, you know, functional fitness and so on that we do so well. Um, so we've got a, a kind of virtual retreat. It's it's called a me treat. Oh. <laughs> so um, nice and it's an at-home retreat so you basically we basically give you all of the components of, of a retreat so the fitness classes meditation massage we actually include um a mummy mot a physio um checkup in there as well um and then we give you all the recipes and shopping lists that you might need um uh, to 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 kind of make sure that you eat healthy over the course of the week and then you can basically sign up to that and you can do it from home or you might be on holiday with your friends and family or to have taken a holiday cottage or whatever and you can do it from there as well um and so it kind of mm, enables you to create that and breathe magic but from wherever you are so um that's something I'm really excited about because hopefully it will mean that you know we're able to to reach out a little bit more flexibly to people um and then a really exciting project that we've got uh, coming up um, we're launching in the next couple of months which is very exciting is a uh, it's called parent food mm. uh, like baby food but parent food um, and it's a it's a pre-prepared meal box um, which is all of the nutrition that you need as new parents um, oh my goodness this is speaking <laughs> to me so much yes um and it's amazing because we we basically we work we work with so liz Sargent is our resident nutritionist and oh i love her. liz she's great she's amazing um 
And so she, we've worked together to create the menus and make it really super nutritionally dense, but really kind of easy and healthy. And, you know, it's, it's not, they're not heavy meals, they're light meals and you're going to feel really lovely after eating them, but it's three meals, two snacks and teas, um, over the course of a week. So you, you basically takes care of you for the whole week and you don't have to think about it at all. And it feeds two people because so many of these food boxes are around, um, just one person and that's great like if it's the mom and they want to you know start eating healthily again being a bit more aware of their body getting stronger you know um, re you know regaining some of their the nutrients that they've lost during pregnancy and so on that that's that's great but then what about the dad like totally. um, so then he has to, he he still has to come home and cook or you might have to cook anyway for him so it felt like a really nice thing to do to do it as a, as a two-person thing where you can where you can enjoy it together and um so that's so that's really exciting we, we're taking we're taking orders and pre-orders for both of those now actually so um well really i'll link excited. all of everything in the show notes so people oh, can find you. out but i think gosh you hit on such a point where i had um a chat with matt the other day of you know i've got about five weeks to go with this baby <laughs> sort of saying right um not that i'm bossy or anything but like for for this month like let's knuckle down and like only do the stuff that we need to do like try and get good sleeps in when we can really look after ourselves because as the pregnant woman you are often doing that because you know you're so terrified of like doing something that is not perfect or anything but actually I you need that from your your partner to to be on top form and be able yeah. to support you and also support themselves as well you know there's no there's no room for somebody else saying I mean I did say the other day like you have to tell your mum to stop saying how tired she is because we are really <laughs> tired at the moment please you know we can't carry other people's things but um, yeah. um if people want to come and find out more about you where should they go um so we are online our website is and breathe postnatal.com um and we're also on instagram and facebook both at and breathe postnatal as well so um hopefully fairly easy to find if you google us you'll you'll also find us because i appreciate it's a fairly long handle on website name so <laughs> no it's good it's great but oh my goodness i've loved chatting and as i said this comes at exactly that right moment of um having a second one it has made me think like I don't just want to be in survival mode I want to see if I can thrive wherever possible and that means putting in boundaries now and saying no and all of these things that we I think with my first I wanted to do that Lion King moment of like here's the baby (laughs) everybody look at the baby whilst I was kind of sellotaping myself back together in the corner and this time I want to be like I made a baby and here I am as well not to kind of get the glory by any means but you know you both glory yeah I mean (laughs) yeah I will I I just want a medal or a cloak something like that you know just to certify (laughs) it no but you have to it's a team effort isn't it you want everybody to be to be well and that's when when families really sort of function where you can come together so I have started to become my mum or my dad or a a weird sort of version of myself going we all need to do jobs in this family to my child I'm like (laughs) who is this where is this voice come from but um (laughs) thank you so much Cleo I've absolutely loved chatting and oh you're so welcome thank you so much for having me oh brilliant thank you Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and I would love to hear what you thought of the episode and share any takeaways with me. Come and find me across social media at Nikki Raby or you can visit the podcast page nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast.